Okay, so the topic today is sound. Um, we're just going to go through a quick overview of what sound is and a few um, things that we need to know when we're talking about sound. So sound. Um, sound is the word we give to vibrations or waves traveling through the air that our ears can pick up. So what is sound? Well, first off, to, to have a sound, you need like an input of energy. So thinking uh, about what we do or, or know about what we do about waves, I don't know if that sentence made sense, but we define waves as a transfer of energy from one place to another. Okay? So when I'm talking, what is the energy being input such that the waves can travel from my mouth and voice box to your ears? Where is that energy coming from? How do we make this happen to begin with? And the answer is I and you and most people have um, a voice box. Okay, so what is a voice box? Well, or I believe it's also called a, is it all, what's it called, a larynx? Is that the right word for it? Larynx? <laughs> we'll just call it a voice box because we don't really care that much about terminology, right? We just want to know the physics of it. So somehow, uh, basically what, what that thing is, more or less, is it's like two strips of muscle, top muscle, that you have a little bit of control over, okay? And when you're speaking, you're directing air through here, okay? And you are modulating these things, okay? They're vibrating, and they are adding to this stream of air vibrations, okay? Then those pass up your neck. I'm going to draw like a terrible biology picture here. Oh, yeah. Well, you'll be able to tell in a minute. It is me. Let's put glasses on it. There I am. It's beautiful. Okay? And so, so voice is not just voice box. You actually have up inside here, up in your head, you have these open chambers, right, called sinuses. And the sinuses act as a resonant chamber. We haven't really talked about what a resonant chamber is just yet. But that is attached up behind your mouth, right? Here's your mouth. This also plays a role. Okay. So we're sending waves from the voice box up into the mouth. Okay. There's some reverberation around up inside your head, behind your schnauzer, which, by the way, is why when you have a cold and everything's inflamed and you can't, have this resonant chamber open you sound much more like this when you talk okay that's that's because that's because this is part of the whole voice this this chamber up here serves to magnify and give your voice a different timber than it would have fewer you know close up okay so now when you're talking right you've got these vibrations right and your mouth is acting like a resonant chamber we'll talk about resonant chambers in a little bit and you are shaping words. You're shaping this vibrating air into different words, right? Like, hello, all right? Hello. So we're changing the shape. Now, what's happening is these vibrations are getting essentially magnified, if you want. Um, and obviously, when you yell or talk in a louder voice, you pass more air and make bigger waves and so on. But these are passing out into the environment as modulated wave fronts, OK? You are modulating them, i.e. changing their, their shape or their distance or their wavelength or so on by opening and closing your mouth, um, you know, moving your tongue around and so on. So there's a modulation that happens in the actual voice box which starts this vibration happening and then that travels on up and moves out. Now it's a lot like in some instruments that we could think of work in a similar way. So just before we answer any questions, let's talk about how this is sort of like a guitar. Let's draw a guitar. The guitar is out of tune. So if we draw a guitar, I want my guitar drawing to be stereotypical. Like, I want you to know it's a guitar. <laughs> I'll draw like an I'll draw like an 11 string like like dragon guitar next time. But for now, it's just a guitar. 
Okay, so on your guitar, let's think about one string. And let's think about all the interesting things that we know about sound and this one guitar string. Okay, the first thing is a guitar string, before it can do anything, has to be plucked. So often guitar players use a pick or plectrum. Plectrum? Yeah, that's right. That's how you get kicked out of the rock club. Hey, you're like, hey, throw me your plectrum. No, it's a pick. Most people say pick. So anyway, the string gets plucked, which sets it to vibrating. Now, let's think about a vibrating string. It... <laughs> you're you're going to get... You are going to get a fundamental frequency in that vibrating string, right? Set up, and it's going to it's going to be vibrating at whatever frequency you've tuned it to, okay? So you remember this, v equals f times lambda. The velocity is set by the tension in the string. So if you get a tighter tension, you actually get a higher frequency and so on. So that frequency changes, right? So that starts some some vibrations happening. And it's not just the string what happened here? It's not just the string that's vibrating. Uh, okay, that's weird. Uh, it's not just the string that's vibrating. Um, okay, there we go. The actual good, the face of the guitar, this is called a soundboard. And the air inside the guitar will also start to vibrate, okay? And what ends up happening is you get what's called resonance going on here. So here's what resonance is. Imagine, I'm going to just take a step back. Imagine that a little kid is swinging on a swing set, right? You give them one push, and they kind of go like this high, right? Then you push them again, but you push them at the exact right time, right? You wait till they swing all the way back, and then you shove them forward. And each time you do that, they get a little bit higher and a little bit higher. Are you with me? Yeah? So this happens. So you get higher and higher as someone's pushing you on a swing. You're putting in a little push each time, and that's building a larger and a larger amplitude, okay? This is a case of resonance. The small inputs at the correct frequency will build up the amplitude. When I was a kid, we had a rope swing at our school. It wasn't like over a gorge or anything, but we had a rope swing. A rope bridge, sorry, not a rope swing, a rope bridge. It was fixed at both sides. And what we would do as kids is we would get on there and we would like start to jump up and down on it. If you jump just right, you can get this thing like rocking and rolling. It also sometimes will happen on a trampoline, although it's not quite as cool. But if you input energy at just the right time, when someone's like coming down from a jump, you do the old dreaded double bounce, and you, and you got the trampoline like kind of like coming up as they're coming down, and they just get like super sprunged, right? So what you're doing is essentially you're timing it. You are resonating with the, with the larger object. And by putting, inputting little bits of energy at just the right time, you can set up a larger wave. Now, a guitar is doing just that. The string on its own barely makes any noise. If you take a, an electric guitar and you pluck a string without the amp being on, it barely makes any noise. If this were like a rock solid block instead of a hollow you know, wooden shell, it would make barely any noise. But by the fact that this vibrates, the shape has something to do with it as well. But you end up setting up inside of here at the right place the air molecules to vibrate back and forth. And then out of the sound hole, right, comes a much amplified version of whatever frequency this thing is, 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 is vibrating at, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so, so when I'm talking, right, I have these resonant chambers up here, up in my nose and so on. The air vibrates along with my vocal cords and I send out a bit of a louder sound. So there you go. Now I can modulate this. I can change the frequencies by either putting my finger on here, by tuning the guitar up or down, or by changing strings. Okay, so there we go. Resonance and sound sort of all at once. So just to clarify, I threw this in. There's some question about my... Uh, my sinus drawing here, okay, <laughs> here's, uh, well, actually, here's your, this looks like maybe your larynx down here, well, it's down here somewhere anyway, um, but yeah, your sinus is all in behind your head here, and this, this is what's called a resonant chamber, 
Now with the guitar, the resonant chamber is inside here. Now what that means is the string vibrates like this. There's a standing wave in the string, but there's also a standing wave being created in the air inside of here. Okay? It is in the same frequency as this string, right? But it has a much larger amplitude because the sound box, right, has a lot of air space in it that can vibrate along with it. So you get this larger amplitude and therefore you get like an amplification of the sound coming out of the sound hole um, versus just what the string could do um, to the air on its own. So we call this inside area that amplifies the sound a resonant chamber. And we say when one thing is vibrating at the same frequency as another, and this is feeding a little bit of energy in there each time, just like pushing someone on the swing. Instead of being pushed on a swing, though, it's air molecules moving back and forth. They get a larger and larger and larger amplitude. So the guitar gets like a standing wave inside of it that's at the same frequency as the plucked string. When you talk, you actually get little standing waves inside your sinuses right that sort of amplify and probably some sound even comes a little bit out your nose although i'm not exactly sure about that i think it does um and out your mouth okay and it's much louder than if you did not have sinuses at all or if you plug your nose and you talk like it it takes away some of the some of the sound and you have to kind of i think put more a little bit more effort into talking when you have when you have plugged up sinuses but they these are like a resonant chamber to increase the volume of your voice for the given input that you have there and to change the tone and sound of your voice. Any more questions about that? Okay, if you start to look at other instruments, a lot of them operate on very similar principles, even something like a drum, okay? If you smack a drum, the top of it vibrates away and usually there's an air chamber inside the drum, okay, that also starts to vibrate and then an amplified sound will pass out of a hole, usually somewhere on a drum, with like a big kick drum, they'll usually have a hole right in the front, and that's where the sound emanates out from, okay? Cymbals are a little bit different, right? They don't have a resonant chamber, but the principle's the same. You smash a cymbal with your drumsticks, and it goes shh. Well, that is that thing shimmying, and it's sending vibrations out into the air, okay? Even me just like taking my fist and like smashing it, onto a tabletop, this is what a fist looks like. It's not a very good fist, but it's a fist all right. Okay, and you smash it on a tabletop, well that tabletop will vibrate and sound will travel out into the air. If you clap your hands, same idea. Um, there's an explosion of energy out into the air, uh, rapid compression, and that travels outward. Now remember, when we're talking about sound waves, are they longitudinal or transverse waves? What are they really like? They are not transverse, in fact. Okay, remember, a transverse wave has the medium like this, and it has the wave's um, amplitude perpendicular to the direction of travel. Whereas, a sound wave is different, right? A sound wave has areas of compressed air, where the air molecules are tight together, and it has areas of spread out air. Okay, so we have what are called rarefactions and compressions. Okay, and we have, I think, looked at this a little bit in another uh, lesson, but if you want uh, an analogy to this, if you imagine that the air molecules are in a line, okay? Where they're close together, they're compressed, and then next to that, you'll have areas where they're very far apart, and so on, okay? Now, this can happen in three dimensions, right? A transverse wave really is sort of stuck to being in like a rope or in a string or something like that. But in the air, right, since you have molecules that can really interact in three dimensions, right? This can then spread out all over the place. So if I talk, right, I get this spreading out of sound in all three dimensions around me. Um, so yeah, it's a longitudinal wave sound. Okay? So there's a few important things to remember. Now, we'll talk later about the speed of sound, but this is just a general background on sort of how sound works and you know what voices and so on. 